Hey, yo, what's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to another uh, Thursday q and I don't know if you're seeing this on Thursday or Friday, to be honest with you. Welcome back, Noah. What's good, man? We took a little hiatus. Glad to have you back on the channel, looking spiffy as ever. What's up, man? So, uh, so you're back from college for winter break. You got any good plans over the break or what? Uh, just make some money, watch yeah. some terrible football these next upcoming weeks, and then just get back on the grind. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't – I'm trying to remember how, like, winter breaks went during college, and I feel like it was nice for, like, a week, but you kind of could convince yourself that you didn't have to work because, oh, you know, I'm going to be back in school in, like, three weeks, but at the same time, it's like, what do you do? Because you're just, like, the pre- – you're in Connecticut, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're you have that, like, winter blue depression, as I do, right? Yeah, it's cold this morning. I woke up and I just didn't want to get out of bed. Yeah, but. it's me like every day, regardless <laughs> regardless of if I'm at school or not. But uh, we're here to talk some football. We are answering your questions. We had some good ones come through from uh, Twitter, from Instagram. So we're kind of um, going to improv most of these. That Not all of them are fantasy related. Some of them are just fucking absurd. But we're going to do our best to answer <laughs> all of them from you guys um we will try to get most of the fantasy ones out of the way i guess first to give you the most value uh we are going to dive into one that came from instagram and it was from my man mike murphy thank you for the question sir jared goff at arizona baker versus cincinnati at home or kirk cousins at detroit six point per passing touchdown so we need a quarterback to lead you to the promised land. And I tell you what, I woke up feeling dangerous. My pick is going to be Baker Mayfield here. Um, I'm looking at matchups. Actually, I mean, you don't, I don't think you really even necessarily need to look at matchups to kind of eliminate Jared Goff out of the equation there based on mm, how they've looked recently, based on how Jared Goff has thrown the ball recently at Arizona is not necessarily an easy game by any means. They've been pretty stiff against quarterbacks. Um, I know they, kind of let up a big day to Matt Ryan and Julio last week. Uh, but I have a lot less faith in Jared Goff, um, you know, traveling on the road. Baker saw Cincinnati. He's been a little a little um, here and there over the last few weeks. But Cincinnati week 12, he tore it up for four touchdowns. That's obviously going to be a monster game when you're talking about six-point passing touchdowns. That team is depleted. They have nothing going on offense, nothing going on defense. Um, the Browns are, for the first time in a while, actually playing for something, right? So the city is hyped up. Baker is going to be hyped up. I think that he comes and he delivers in a big way. And the Cleveland fans are going to love him for that. Do you have any concerns? uh, Not concerns, but any any thoughts about playing Kirk over uh, Baker here? No, I just think both quarterbacks, Goff and Kirk, they've just been – they've looked terrible lately. And I don't like – well, Goff's matchup isn't very good on the road in Arizona. And then even at Detroit, I mean, they've held a lot – like I think four of the last five teams they've played, they've held under 20 points. And I just think with the way Dalvin Cook's looking and Detroit not being the best against the run, I think they're just going to pound the rock and not really look back. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Both Cousins and Goff have kind of looked shaky over the last few weeks, especially. And uh, yeah, that that Minnesota offense, man, has has really like switched gears. And I think a lot, I mean, a lot of it has to do with Kirk, you know, being a little like hesitant now. He looks, uh, he looks weird under center. Um, and they could blame the offensive coordinator or blame whoever they want. But I think having Dalvin Cook is is obviously going to limit the number of opportunities that guys like Diggs and Thielen get because he's such a good running back. And um, and I think that's going to lower the ceiling of Kirk overall. So we are going to roll with Baker there. And we are going to move on to another question from Zagram. Uh, Sikkim Nick was good. He says, when you hire in those interns. Uh, so I've actually already hired all of them and then I fired all of them. So that's already done with. No, yeah, I don't know why I'm here right now. Yeah, Noah's going to be fired immediately after this, if not um, during it multiple times. <laughs> yeah, so uh, no, for real, uh, I've went through all the applications and stuff. So if you have not heard back from me at this point, then I've probably chosen to move forward with other people at this time. Um, that doesn't mean that I won't reach out to you in the future, um, whether that be, you know, in a couple months or down the road or whatever. Um, but for right now, I'm, I'm trying to scale this kind of slowly and take it step by step and not jump into um, too many things at once. So I, I appreciate the application. I appreciate, you know, the time you put in for that kind of stuff. Um, but if you have not heard back from me at this point, then I have probably chosen to move forward elsewhere. Thank you for the question, though, Nick. And we have another one from IG from Brett J. Priest. 
was Gucci. He says, is CMC, I think he's talking about CMAC, a possible candidate for pick 101 next season? I mean, when you first read it, you're like, fuck no. But the more you think about it, man, like how how you feeling? What, what do you think about that? I think it's got to be all formats too. I mean, the main argument was like, he wasn't finding the end zone enough. What's he have, like 13 touchdowns now? Something crazy. He's about to go 1,000, 1,000. I mean, in PPR and half PPR leagues, you got to consider it. Obviously, Gurley's going to get the work on the ground. Barkley, I think Barkley, for me, is my 1-1 next year because he's pretty much McCaffrey, but, like, more consistent running-wise. Like, sometimes McCaffrey won't get the yards on the ground. He's obviously going to get worked in the passing game. But, like, overall, I like Barkley more. But I think there's obviously, like, an argument to be made. Like, the offense has kind of dropped off recently for the Panthers, but I think when, like, Cam's arm isn't, like, falling off and they just have, like, all cylinders like, going or whatever, I think there's an argument to, uh, to be made for him to be the 1.01. Yeah, I agree with that. I think um, there's an argument to be made. I think it's more so based around if it's a full PPR league as opposed to, like, standard league, I'm not going to think about taking C-Mac at the 101 because touchdowns fluctuate, and for all we know, he can come back down to seven or eight touchdowns next year. I think you also, of course, have to take into consideration who else you're looking at there. And, you know, it's going to be hard to pass up on Gurley next year at the 101. Um, a couple other guys, like you said, Barkley. Barkley, as much as I love the talent there, um, you're going to have to see what they do in the offseason in terms of coaches, uh, you know, OC, line, quarterback, especially knowing what's going to go on there. Because the last thing I want to do again is take a, a guy like a David Johnson, who's in a shitty, shitty situation. Right. And then like, you got to root for them all year and you become clinically depressed by the end of the year. And I don't want that again. I don't care that Saquon Barkley is a generational talent at the running back position. And I think, you know, like Melvin Gordon is another guy you wouldn't consider up there and like the, in the top three picks as well. Um, the health is obviously not, fun to have him on your team right now but I mean when he was healthy he was as good as anyone in fantasy Zeke is another one who's coming on super super strong that offense has taken on a whole new fucking identity since Cooper's come over there the other guy I think is kind of like a, a, a dark horse I guess for the 101 is Alan Kamara because Ingram is on the final year of his contract so if they don't keep him and they choose to ride into next year with Kamara as the workhorse I don't know, man. I think he might be my 101, to be honest with you. It'd be tough between him and, and Gurley because I think an argument going into the year was, you know, will he hold up as, like, the workhorse? And we saw him fucking absolutely kill the league, right, over those first four games. And he's obviously slowed down a little bit. Ingram's gotten his work, and um, the offense has fluctuated a little bit over the over the recent weeks. But Kamara's looked as good as ever. He's up to, like, 1,500 total yards, 16 touchdowns, like, almost 80 receptions. Didn't get into the fucking Pro Bowl, which, I, you know, you want to say it's a snub, but you look at the guys who did get in ahead of him. It was like, who is it, Zeke, Gurley, and uh, – And Saquon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't know, maybe just, like – I don't know what the rules are, but it's so like, how do you, how do you not let a guy in who has those kind of numbers? They got the um, fullback. Yeah, exactly. They got to, uh, they got to represent somehow in that backfield. He's, I guess he's the best running back in the situation there. So they let him in rightfully. And um, yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I think the argument to be made for C-Mac as a, as a one-on-one is definitely a real thing. I probably won't personally do it, but I could see how he could make his way into the conversation. That was a good question. I like that. So we got, one from Chris Senzo. Uh, thank you for the question, sir. Josh Allen, Nick Foles, or Jameis Winston, six point per passing touchdown. Ooh, I didn't actually read that last part um, that it was six point passing touchdown because I know we were talking about it prior to this that we both kind of like Josh Allen here. Does the fact that it's six point per passing touchdown change anything for you? Maybe a little bit because Josh Allen kind of like relies heavily on his feet and a rushing touchdown in this league is as much as a throwing touchdown. And we've seen that he's not going to throw three touchdowns a game. Guys like Nick Foles and James Winston obviously have like a higher like floor for passing touchdowns, even though they haven't thrown many in the recent weeks. But yeah, that, that changes things for me. So who are you going with? I was thinking Josh Allen. I don't know. Nick Foles looked good last week, and he's at home. I know Houston's a tough defense, but they're much better against the run than they are the pass. I think it, for me, it's really close between Foles and Allen. Uh, as for Winston, he's going up against Dallas, and there's no chance they get blown out again. Their defense is way too good to just let Jameis Winston put up three touchdowns against them. I think I'm still going to lean Allen, but the point, the fact that it's six points per passing touchdown makes it close. I just think what he's going to do with his legs against the Pats. I saw a stat earlier from, I think, Evan Silva that they've said, like, the uh, Patriots are terrible against running quarterbacks. I think Mitchell Trubisky went for, like, 80 yards against them rushing and a touchdown. There's a few others like Mariota. 
they just get torn up. And I think Allen like can he can stretch the field with his arm, and he can also break open plays with his legs. Yeah, I was just looking at some of the numbers, and Allen hasn't thrown for three touchdowns yet this year. He's thrown for two just a single time. So he's at one passing touchdown or fewer in every game this season. Zero, 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 zero. He's thrown zero five out of the, like the ten games that he started so far. It's kind of scary, but just the fact that he's putting up these rushing numbers is um, it, it's hard to pass up on. And like you said, it's like this Patriots game should be one where the Buffalo Bills are going to have to you know play from behind pretty heavily. I think the line is what's the line got to be like ten points, two touchdowns maybe. Um, I think I saw twelve and a half earlier today. Yeah, figured it was somewhere in between the two of those. Uh, Thirteen over under at forty four and a half. Okay, so they don't project a lot of points, but the, point, the fact of the matter is that Josh Allen's a guy who will escape from the pocket, and if they're in a situation where they need to pass the ball a lot, that, you know, you got to think of it from, I guess, more of a outside-of-the-box picture. It's like him having to throw the ball will always lead to more rushing opportunities, you know, and it's not necessarily like they need to have designed rushing um, plays for Josh Allen for him to put up those numbers. So it does come close with Foles. Like you said, they have a worse passing defense in Houston, um, and he looked good, but he wasn't really putting up crazy stats last week. Yeah, um, no touchdowns. Yeah, it's because the running backs ended up getting in the end zone. Smallwood had two and, and whatever. I think I would also roll with – oh, man, dude, it fucking hurts to tell someone to, <laughs> to play Josh Allen in the championship. Does it feel any better to tell him to play Nick Foles? No, no. <laughs> I mean, when you put it that way, I guess not. Um, yeah, I guess I guess we'll roll with Josh Allen here and uh, and take the uh, take the rushing floor and hopefully since they are you know on the attack we'll see some scores from Josh Allen him and Robert Foster are the most dynamic one two punch in the NFL at this point it's uh, it's Just a past Thielen thing. and Kirk Cousins yeah dude they really have they they suck the powers out of them um, so we're gonna go with Josh Allen there man good luck every everyone good luck everyone anyone that we answer questions <laughs> for good luck this week man we are me and Noah are out of our our big money league playoffs. So if you sense a, a lack of enthusiasm, that's, that's a good transition for the next question. Um, oh yeah. Why does uh fantasy football suck so much? How long do you have? Yeah. <laughs> Cause we could sit here all day with explanations. You think our analysis gets deep on fantasy fucking questions. I could probably lay down some fucking big facts about why fantasy football sucks. It's it's depressing, man. It's because you put so much goddamn time and work into it, like all year, right? And then one week, there's just so much variance about what can happen. Like a good team doesn't need to necessarily win. The team with Todd Gurley is going to win, even if the rest of his team sucks. Fantasy football mm-hmm. sucks so much because it's only because we love it so much, man. You only yeah. get disappointed when you are excited about something. The good thing about losing is now you can prepare for next year, which is the best thing about fantasy football. Exactly. I'm already ready to do some fucking mock drafts for 2019. <laughs> that CMAC question got me, got me fucking rolling, man. Um, but speaking of the offseason, we have another question. What to do now that the fantasy season is over? I have two suggestions, and they were both about binge watching a TV show, but they're specific. It needs to be Entourage or it needs to be The Sopranos. You don't start the offseason off with – a show that is different than either of those two. Entourage, I just started Entourage uh, two nights ago, and I finished the first season last night. I'm ready to roll. I think I'm going to roll through season two, three, four, five in the next week. I'm not going to about it. I haven't seen either of those. I'm not going to lie. I've seen Breaking Bad a few times, though. Wow. I honestly didn't think it would it would take this long for me to fire you, but it did. Oh, we're, How long we're is this? We're, I don't know. Do we have a time? <laughs> <laughs> recording time but you're so fucking fire How you guys seen- mark it down what is wrong with you that i don't know i'm I'm serious that's a prerequisite <laughs> to be working for my brand over this winter break you're watching entourage dude i was trying to study for finals last week and i watched like two movies in one day it was just a mess okay so now you don't have finals now you can watch two seasons in one day that is true all right good yo y'all are holding him to this if you don't watch entourage by the end of winter break you're fired. I'm ser- I'm serious this time. <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah, you gotta quiz me. Send me like quiz questions on Twitter. If I fail, DM Nick. And yeah, I'll be asking him. Board. I'm so upset. But that's that's my suggestion is to watch one of those two shows. It gets you Entourage will get you pumped up. You know, more of a like looking forward to a life thing. Sopranos is uh is a whole nother animal. You'll start talking like you're in the mafia. It's like you take <laughs> you start talking in an Italian accent. Actually, after a while, it's kind of fucked up. But those those are my those are my two suggestions for you. 
Um, and, and speaking of watching shows, we had a question come in asking if we watched anime. Now, no, you look like an anime guy. Any truth to that? Um, rumor is that I'm an anime guy. Truth is I'm not. I don't think I've ever watched an anime. I mean, like I watched Pokemon when I was younger, if that counts. But no, I haven't <laughs> dipped my toes into any anime. I don't think that's uh, anime. No, definitely not. I think uh, I think we need better sources then. If you're not an anime guy, I have never watched anime. You know what though? Anime is like really fucking big. Like some of my friends that I'm like close friends with, are like, dude, I love anime. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, you actually like, like, what is it about? I don't know. So, so whoever likes anime in the audience that watches this, if there's like, uh, send me like the Entourage or the Sopranos of anime, <laughs> and I will get into it, and maybe I'll enjoy it. I've never seen anime, but I, I think maybe I just give it a bad stigma. Isn't um, Dragon Ball Z anime? I think I, I've seen that when I was younger. Uh, I'm not sure if, I feel like that's like, it's like too cool to be anime. I feel like for it to be anime, <laughs> it needs to be like really kind of weird. Like it's like anime is a hipster in a sense that the people who watch it don't want other people to watch it, I don't think. Uh, if we get a dislike on the video, it's from Luis X Rivera. 100% because we didn't watch it. Oh, hold on. I, I've seen anime porn before, though. All right, Louis, don't get mad at me. All the girls are shaped very nicely, okay? They're cartoons. They make them that way. I'm kidding. I haven't seen anime porn. This is taking uh, a turn. Yeah, I'm sorry. We should have stuck to fan <laughs> fantasy questions only. CJ Anderson signing news. If Gurley sits out this week, which Rams running back can you trust in your lineup? For me, I mean, I'm not even looking at CJ Anderson, and I'm not sure I trust any of them. I don't think that they're going to really roll with, like, a workhorse back now. I mean, they got to win. They've looked terrible recently. I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they just, like, throw the ball. Who are they playing this week? Arizona? Yeah. Maybe they will run, but, like. Yeah, they're, like, 14-point favorites, I believe. Uh, yeah. And we'll have to see what Gurley status is. But, I, yeah, like you said, I don't think there's a reason for them <laughs> to push Gurley here because they are playing the Cardinals. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I like John Kelly as a prospect, but, like, I don't know. He didn't look great. Last week's game when Gurley was in and out and Justin Davis hurt his shoulder. So we kind of have to watch reports about that. But there's no way anyone's going to give you Todd Gurley type value, you know, in your lineup if Gurley does, in fact, miss the game. I'm not looking at C.J. Anderson, like you said. Um, you know, you, they don't just like insert a running back right into the offense and, and let him roll. Um, I mean, he could get, you know, five to seven carries or something. But like, that's not the type of replacement that you're looking for. Um, yeah. Todd Gurley, like. That Jamal Williams would obviously be the number one waiver wire pickup from the running back standpoint, um, depending on yeah, – I, I just think there's a lot of other options that you could probably go with outside of the Rams' backfield, I guess. I don't know. I feel like it's too early in the week right now. We're filming this on Wednesday. Um, we'll have to see what the reports on Gurley and Justin Davis are to kind of predict on who I'd want in the, in the backfield if I am going to roll the dice on one of them. I'm not going to lie. I didn't even know who Justin Davis was like five seconds ago. I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't even know who he is either. I've just, seen his, I've just seen his name like multiple times. And I know he, I know he was like on the depth chart and got some play when Gurley went out. So I was just like, yeah, Justin Davis, Justin Davis. That, that guy sucks. Yeah. He's a spark freak. Yeah. I have no clue who he is. Yeah. No, nah, me either. So don't play Justin Davis unless you know who he is and he's actually good. Then, uh, then you can come commandeer my channel. It's all yours, bros. What else? Let's take some from Twitter. The Twitter sphere. We have a question from Adam Ginsburg. Half PPR. I need two of four. Corey Davis versus Washington. Mike Williams versus Baltimore. Adam Humphreys at Dallas. Robert Foster at New England. Four wide receivers. We need two of them in half PPR. Where are you rolling? As a Chargers fan, how are we feeling about Michael, Michael, Sir Michael Williams? No. Uh, not that great. I mean, last week I put out a bold tweet. First of all, I had one that said Damian Williams is a bum or something. I got a lot of heat for that. But the second one was that Mike Williams would outscore Keenan Allen and you could put the fucking house on that. And guess what happens? Mike Williams outscored Keenan Allen. I mean, I didn't think Keenan Allen was going to get hurt. I didn't try to put a curse on him, but... Last week was just a perfect matchup for him. They had to he score. Was, he was working that witchcraft. You put the I, money down. That's why you're in a new house right now. That it's, is true. Yeah, I had to move on yes. to bigger and better things. Yeah, he backed up the talk. <laughs> I bought a house just to take out a mortgage on it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> but he just had a great matchup last week. And with Keenan Allen out, I mean, he was bullying people on the outside. This week against Baltimore, the Chargers, I mean, they hold on to the ball for forever. Baltimore holds on to the ball for forever. Both defenses are pretty solid. 
And with Melvin Gordon back, they're probably going to run the ball 20 to 25 times between him and Jackson. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like 48 to 50 plays run on offense on both sides, and there's just not going to be enough volume for Williams. I mean, Baltimore defense is like solid, and I don't think Philip Rivers can go out there pushing the ball to him like 20 yards down the field or just like pushing it to him in the end zone. So I'm not a huge fan of him this week, especially in half PPR. And if Keenan Allen plays, I think you just can't start him. I'm with you on that. So that eliminates one of them. Who's the other one? Who's the other guy you're looking at to take off? <sighs> it's got to be Corey Davis. Oh, it might I, knew be I knew you weren't going to go with your boy Adam Humphreys. I was like, you can't do him dirty like that. Yeah, I love him too much. But I think the yeah. thing is with against Washington, I just think that the way Derrick Henry has looked, I know like nobody wants to admit it, but Derrick Henry has been phenomenal recently, and I just don't see how they stop running the ball. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Washington's Derrick defense- Henry fucking sucks, bro. <laughs> it's, week, it's week 16. They're playing against Jacksonville. Jacksonville has no- – what do they have to play for? Literally, that defense doesn't give a fuck. If you're on that defense and you see Derrick Henry's fat ass running at you, are you going to try to tackle him? It depends. If I'm just trying to pick up a check. No, no, at the no, end no, of no. That's not the answer. Don't say depends. You know your ass ain't going to fucking tackle him. No, nah, that boy's way that, too big, moving way too fast. That's what I'm saying. Like, Derrick Henry, if you're playing against <clears> him at this point, he hasn't, he, he hasn't gotten any fucking play time since like week three and now he's on fresh legs going against teams that don't give a shit and now everyone's <laughs> like oh it's fucking derrick henry's the next coming of he's gonna be the next coming of fucking trent richardson probably no, he's the him. next coming of derrick henry weeks one through 13 exactly yeah it's crazy that derrick henry is rb 18 and he didn't even play in weeks one Jeez. through 10 well that's why i'm off Corey davis because i just don't see how they move away from the run now it's gonna be a low scoring game and davis has gotten i think let me see here i have some stats or maybe I don't. But it, I think target totals have gone down over the last yeah. – I was looking at – it was like six and three and four and shit. Um, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, the over-under in that game is like 37. So, I mean, Derrick Henry might get that that big workload again. Totally conceivable. But, I mean, I mean Washington is another team that doesn't really have shit to play for either, I guess. Even though, wait, they won last week. So, they kind yeah, of they, are fighting for a playoff spot. They're still in it. But, I mean, who's their quarterback? Josh Johnson. I just don't see them doing anything this week. Put some fucking respect on Josh. I only respect one Josh, and it's Allen. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> or Adams, but he stinks. Yeah, Corey Davis the past couple weeks, six targets, three targets, seven targets, four targets, four targets. Finished as a top 24 receiver twice, but one of them was 96 yards and a touchdown, so that's that's not a huge game. This is absurd. My week, but. Derrick Henry has over 400 yards and six touchdowns over the last two weeks. <laughs> I saw that one fade, week. Fade, with like fade, 240 fade. yards and four touchdowns. That was like a third of his like previous production for the entire year was one game. I know. I'm, su- I'm surprised that wasn't – looking at his oh, game logs, I'm surprised that – yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't like 90% of the production he's had. So, um, Noah is sitting – I'm sorry, I forget what the fucking question was. First two. You're sitting Mike Williams. Williams, Mike Williams. Oh, you're rolling with Robert Foster, huh? Uh, Dude, imagine you're in a fantasy championship and you have Josh Allen at quarterback, Robert Foster at wide receiver, and Derek Henry at like running back. Oh my god, that, that that stack, that Josh Allen stack, and Robert <laughs> Foster is either going to win or lose people their championships. They're either going off for like a forty spot or literally a donut. And I'm a little yeah. nervous about that. I would play Adam Humphreys. He's the one piece in here that is a constant for me. Uh, Corey Davis, like you said, I just uh, – I don't know. Nothing about that Titans offense is appetizing to me. It's going to be low scoring. His target totals have kind of gone down. Um, Taewon Taylor is, is getting a little bit more play there. So, I like I like Taewon. Um, but it's just not a lot about that offense, especially when Derrick Henry has been getting just so much work and, and they're going to keep, you know, keep feeding him. Mike Williams with Baltimore, like you said, tough matchup. Um, and I talked about this in my waiver wire video this week that – um, you know, I was excited about him, but I, I don't necessarily think people need to get overly excited because of the game. This was the first time since like week two, he went over 75 receiving yards. He's not a guy who necessarily racks up the receptions and the yardage. And that's because he doesn't really get the whole uh, big snap counts. And the only reason that he kind of got it last week was because Keenan was Keenan Allen was out. So Keenan Allen is in, which I think they're going to push him to play because, you know, they have a lot on the line, of course. Um, then, I'm probably looking to fade Mike Williams as well. So I guess I'm rolling with with Foster and Humphreys, man. Um, and I tweeted this out earlier for those of you guys. You know, I, I feel weird, like, repeating shit that I, like, if I tweet something out and then keep saying the stats in my videos. But I realize that, like, people don't, you know, um, like, organic reach on these social platforms that only hits, like, 10% of the people each time you say something. So I'm going to keep fucking repeating myself because these are good <laughs> stats, all right? Say it louder uh, for the people in the back. Let's go, Robert Foster. 
four feet <laughs> chip. Um, Robert Foster has three 100 yard receiving games in his last five games, 94 plus yards in four of his last five games. He also leads the NFL over the last seven weeks in receptions of 40 plus yards. This is a game where, like we said, 13 and a half point dogs. Allen's going to have to throw the ball. Robert Foster seems like his favorite target right now, especially on the outside. I don't know what this – like, if you're the Pats defense, if you're Uncle Bill, what? how do you even – like, what do you what do you prepare for? Do you just try to stop Allen on the ground? You can't. I mean, there's you no can't. stopping Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> you can't prepare. There's, you just fucking take the L like a man. Are Everybody they, watching this, buy a house, take out a mortgage on it, and bet it on the spread for the Bills. 13 points, no chance, dude. No chance the Patriots won by 13. Josh Allen's a wild animal. It's a fucking lock. Lock of the millennium right there. I love that. Take the mortgage out. Okay, sorry. I thought I thought we just had some breaking news. I'm making shit up. It was a big thought only. Uh, yeah, Bills plus 13 is lock of the century. And if it's not, I'm already fired, so I'm not liable. Okay, yeah, you're not even like actually on – the payroll right now so whatever you say doesn't count okay so we had some questions from eric <sighs> my man hustle he asks did a certain somebody from a popular podcast really threaten to report you to youtube if so why nosy bitches like me want to know all right well i know what you're referring to so the night where uh kanye went on his crazy twitter rant you know uh firing off tweets about drake and i was quote tweeting a lot of them um, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, I was retweeting a lot of Kanye's um, like psychotic tweets that were going out and just saying random shit. And uh, one of them was like, we're both too popular for you to actually do anything about it. And that was Kanye tweeting to Drake. So I quote tweeted it. And then I at Andy Holloway of the fantasy footballers. And I was like, when you tried to report me to, or I, I forget what I said exactly, but I said something and I think people took it seriously. Like Andy, like reported me to YouTube and tried to get my channel kicked off. And I want to set the record straight that that motherfucker did. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> he, uh, Andy's a great guy. Andy's a really, really good dude. Um, he did not, absolutely did not do that. So put some, put some respect on his name. He did not report me to the, to the authorities. Um, he actually came on my channel and we had a great talk one time, which I will link down below or, or somewhere. Um, you guys should check that out. Cause that was a lot of fun. But no, they he he didn't do that. So Eric, keep your keep your fucking nose out my business, bro. I'm kidding. I, I love you. Thank you for the question. He also says on the topic of fantasy football itself, I'm starting and running a dynasty league for next season. Never been in one before. How much of a headache am I in for? Uh, you ever had a migraine before? <laughs> That's big the kind only. of big yeah B H O big headaches only. Uh, no, you have you ever done a dynasty league? No, but I, I'd really want to. I feel like that would just like consume my whole year, and that's, I'm so down for that. Yeah, so I, uh, I started getting into Dynasty Leagues this year. Um, I had played in one prior to this year, but I started getting more into them, and I was in like, I'm in like three or four now, um, and I did my first one as a commissioner this year. I started up a subscriber Dynasty League, and it's, uh, it's, it's a little, I guess it, it could be a headache. If, if you've never played in a dynasty league whatsoever, there are a lot of rules outside of redraft leagues that you kind of have to be aware of. Um, one is obviously the rosters are way bigger, right? You play with like the draft you have is anywhere from like 24 to 30 people on your team because you roster a huge team. So you have to understand that like throughout the season, the waiver wires are, are tiny. Um, in terms of like a headache, it's really not that crazy if you set ground rules up front. A few of the things that you have to think about are trading, right? Trading is a huge piece because you can't find a lot of players on the waiver wire, right? So you're constantly trading future draft picks and you're constantly trading players. So what you have to, what you have to decide is like if you are going to be allowed to trade future draft picks, do you want people to be able, like people to have to buy in up until the year that they're trading draft picks? Because uh, you know, as much as you want everyone to be in it for the whole time, there the turnover rate in dynasty leagues is pretty high unless you're playing with people that like you're really really close with. So I think it comes down to having people that you know are in it for the long haul. And if you don't, like a few of the dynasty leagues I'm in, I'm actually going to probably leave because I'm not really in it with people that I know, and I'd rather start up new ones this summer with people that I do know. Um, so you're going to get a, a high turnover rate which means people might be knowing that they're going to leave starting trading future draft picks. So for the BDGE 
dynasty startup league that I did with the subscribers, we actually had a rule where you had to pay 50% of next year's buy-in by week five of this year. So that, that kind of, um, even if you do end up leaving, right, you kind of leave 50% of the buy-in on the table. So that kind of, um, you know, that, that puts something on the line for you. So think about future draft picks, how you want to handle that. Think about the actual draft itself, because that's, that's big. Um, that's a lot of time commitment, right? 24, 30 rounds or whatever. So what we did was an email draft and it actually took us about three or four weeks. And it felt like we were going through like hell together, basically. Like it was fun. But then when you hit like, like rounds 18, 19, 20, you're drafting dudes that like you couldn't give a fuck less about. And everyone's like, let's go. And since it was subscribers league, right? Most of the people I had no idea who they were at the time. Uh, we ended up getting people that were from all over the world. One guy was like overseas at the time. So it's like we would wake up, do our draft picks, he'd be sleeping and then vice versa. So the draft took like way longer. Um, and it, it depends on, I guess, who is in the league for you. So these are things to think about. You also have to think about um, taxi squad. There you go. Thanks. Um, you, have to you can decide whether or not you want to have a taxi squad. And basically <clears throat> what that is, is you could put players on the taxi squad who are most of the times they're rookies and they don't count towards your active roster spots you can have them sit on the taxi squad all year because you know they're not really going to play and then take them off and activate them the following year because there are a lot of guys that maybe you like, but you don't think that they're really going to develop that quickly, like tight ends and wide receivers you'll see a lot of um, on that. So there's like the taxi squad. And uh, besides that kind of stuff, it's really not that much different than a redraft in terms of like when you're in season, it's all pretty much the same. Um, it's the off season stuff that you, you have to start thinking about. Like you do each year, you do like a rookie draft, right? You have the, your one startup draft where everyone picks their entire team. And then you have a rookie draft where it's usually right after the NFL draft and people really like, for some reason go nuts. If you don't do it right after the NFL draft, but I don't really think it gives them like matters because you don't really know much about the rookies right after the NFL draft in terms of analysis. Um, you have to decide when you want to do your, um, your rookie draft, whether it's right after the NFL draft or whether it's right before the NFL season kicks off. These are a few things to consider. But in terms of like a headache, I don't, I don't know. This, it's not really that much of a headache. If you've never done one before, just do a little bit of research and you'll figure it out. If you've done one before and you're just worried about being the commissioner, I mean, it's no different than being the leader of fucking anything in life. If you're organized and people listen to, to what you say, you'll, you'll be fine. I believe in you, Eric. You could do this and I will hold your hand through the process, okay? Got you, dog. <laughs> um sorry that was a really fucking long answer no it's chris good. chris says mac versus the giants chris carson versus kc dj versus the rams pick two full pp oh and i th i think you said that he followed up with adding jamal right. williams in there afterwards yeah um, so out of these two or out of these three or i guess four who who would you most likely be sitting um, well, first off, I'm just going to sit Jamal Williams. We've seen what he's done this year. Hasn't been very impressive. It's a decent matchup against the Jets, but I think the Pat or the Packers are only half-point favorites, and they just look terrible lately, so I don't know. I just feel like they're not going to push him. Like, he'll probably get 15 carries, but what's he really going to do with that? Every time they're in the red zone, they just throw it up to Devontae Adams. Um, so it really comes down to these three guys anyways, and I think I just got to sit David Johnson. I mean, he's been – not great lately that offense and that oh, hell yeah you're on the sit david johnson train <laughs> baby yeah dude i don't care it's ppr he's just not getting like last week he had something like 60 yards in the first quarter and then he had like five in the second quarter it was just it was pathetic he had like a nice catch down the sideline and then they just didn't use him again mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going on there and plus like marlon mack versus the giants the giants are terrible against running backs their offensive line is like so good they've they're probably just going to blow the Giants out as much as you Giants hands hate that. And the defense for Indianapolis has really stepped up lately. I just don't see how he doesn't get 20 plus carries against like a great matchup. He's a lock. And then Chris yeah. Carson, every time he's healthy, he gets 20 or more carries. Last week he looked incredible. Kansas City can't stop the run. I just think it's easy for those two. Plus they're, are they both at home? I think Carson's on the road. Either way, I think I'm just going to roll with him or those two guys. Yeah, I think I'm with you there, too. Um, I, I think all four are, are – it's, it's a good problem to have, to be honest with you, because you're going to get a lot of volume out of whoever you throw into your lineups. Uh, but I think Mack and Carson are really, really good plays. And when I sit down and do my rankings, I think both of them will probably be top 
12, maybe Carson will stretch it out to the 12 to 15 spot. But yeah, Carson is, is just a monster when he is healthy. Um, we'll have to see what happens with Rashad Penny. I think maybe that limits his ceiling a little bit because he'll get a monster workload if Penny's out again between him and Mike Davis. So one thing that does kind of concern me about Carson is that Mike Davis, when he's been the second running back, has been so heavily involved in the passing game and playing against Kansas City. You know, it, it should be a close game or a closer game than Kansas City has like, you know, made with other teams throughout like the beginning of the year everything was being blowouts and, and shootouts and stuff like that now not so much I guess so I expect Seattle to be in this game I think it was a three and a half point spread so if if Kansas City does end up scoring a lot of points you know and start racking it up then Seattle's going to start throwing the ball and Mike Davis might get a little bit more playing time but I think Carson has just been so good so much volume um Kansas City is not good against running backs and then you look at Marlon Mack like you said um that offensive line is incredible the Giants since they've gotten rid of Snacks Harrison I mean, they just got fucking eaten up by De- – he, 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 they were one of Derrick Henry's, you know, victims. 170 and two touchdowns last week. Since Harrison has been gone, they have just been letting up, like, hundreds and hundreds of yards to every running back that comes through their way. Um, and I saw this stat last week that was, like, when the Colts have Ryan Kelly in their lineup at center, they average 5.1 yards per carry versus, like, 3.4, 3.7 or yards per carry without him. He came back last week, and we saw Mac have – one of his arguably his best game of the year. And I think they probably continue that, keep him rolling. So I think Mack and Carson are both good bets to get 20 plus touches and, uh, and probably find the end zone at some point in their matchup. So those would be the two guys I would go with as well, Chris. Yeah, one second. I was wrong. Um, Seattle is at home too, which I think also plays in the favor of uh, Chris Carson. So those are all the ones we got on Twitter. Do we have any other ones from Zagram? Yeah, we have streaming defense. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, Indianapolis Colts, New England Patriots, or Miami. All I know is Miami has the lowest over-under this week, and they're at home. They're not a great like defense for fantasy or real life. Yeah, I don't see how they don't intercept Kessler, or Kessler probably just won't throw. I just don't see how they're not going to be a good play. But Indianapolis, home against the Giants, I could also see them being pretty good. I mean, they've been incredible lately. It's it's a real like close toss up between those two. I think I'm just taking Dallas and New England out of the equation. Dallas is, um, I I mean I like Dallas, but again it's like one of those teams where you don't know what you're getting out of the Buccaneers, and you don't want to catch them on a day where Winston decides to fuck around and throw up 400 on on the defense. So it's like I would probably fade them as well. And since we're fucking riding the Josh Allen train all the way to the championship, I don't think it would make sense for us to tout the Patriots. Although by principle they are at home heavy favorites, 44 and a half over under. So that would project the Bills to score, yeah, about 16. Um, Vegas would have yeah. the Bills as a, as a point total. I do. I think I would go with the Dolphins. I still think the Giants have, like, I don't know. I feel like the Giants have more – not that they have more to play for because they really don't after last week, but I think they have more pride. Like, I, I think they'll finish strong. I don't know if we'll see uh, Odell back on the field at any point this year, but I still think Eli will, you know, give – give whatever he has left in his little little body that's diminished. <laughs> little right now. Yeah. I mean, I would roll with Miami there, bro. Uh, 38 and a half over under minus four and Miami, they, they've been a very surprising team this year, man. And Jags obviously are, are they, they're playing Kessler this week? Not Orals. I, I think they're playing Kessler. And last week they didn't even use Fournette all that much. I don't know what's going on there. I just, yeah, I think I'd go Miami. It's be a low scoring game. Yeah. The Jags are so shot. So that's that's probably who I would go with as well. There's um a quarterback on Winston versus Cowboys or Ravens quarterback whose name escapes me versus Chargers. I think that would be Lamar Jackson. And I think that's an easy one. I think it's Lamar Jackson there. Okay. Did uh yeah, Lamar Jackson would be starting this week. Um I had to think about that for a second because that's I really haven't been <laughs> looking at anything, man. It's bad. Y'all should not be taking my advice this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> Only take my anime advice. That's about as far as the goodness goes. Which you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson there too. I just think that, um, the Winston, the Winston matchup does not appeal to me at all. I do. I do think that the fact that Deshaun Jackson is back at practice is a boost for Winston. If he does get in the lineup, it's, um, it's going to be more appealing to me, but at the end of the day, I don't see him more as anything like a high end quarterback two. might flirt with quarterback one numbers, but I'm not too excited about getting him in my lineup, especially not when you have an option like Lamar Jackson. Yeah, over the past couple of weeks, too. I mean, the Buccaneers have really flipped the script. Their offense hasn't been playing well, and their defense has been, like, really good. This might actually be, like, a defensive battle versus the Cowboys, like, somehow. So, yeah. I'm not I'm not huge on them, or on Winston this week. 
Yeah, I don't I don't get like how that that always happens with teams. Like their offense turns terrible, their defense turns good and and vice versa, and it just makes no fucking sense. Yeah, even the Saints are kind of doing that right now. Yeah, exactly. Just I don't know, man. I fucking hate the NFL to be honest with you. <laughs> so happy this season's almost over. Who do you like for the uh Super Bowl this year? Unbiased. You know what I'm gonna say. Unbiased. Unbiased. Honestly, I think that, Chiefs- that changes that changes your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got to be biased out here. Big bias only. In the NFC, I think it's going to be the Saints. Their defense has been really good, and their offense could flip the switch. I just – I think the Rams aren't even that great. I don't even – I don't know. i just not huge fans of them. And I think in the AFC, I'm not going to say the Patriots as much as people are like, oh, yeah, in January the Patriots are so much better. I'm still going to go with the Chiefs. I think they're better than the Chargers. I think the Chargers are the second-best team in the AFC, and I think the Texans are the third. But I, just, I don't see how, like – Mahomes goes out there and like doesn't put up big games in prime time unless yeah. like Andy Reid screws it over like again. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. I I still think uh, the Chiefs need to. Ooh, um, the Chiefs need to. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> something funny just just popped up. Uh, I think yeah, I'm a fan of the Chiefs still. I think that they have probably the best shot of representing the AFC. That being said, though, I'm never gonna talk down the Patriots, man. This is fucking. This is I will air time. If there's ever a time where like people have really been doubting them and saying that it's over, this is a lock for Gronk going fucking seven for one forty two in wild card <laughs> weekend, and it's not going to look good for all the people that are doubting the Pats fans right now. Yeah, he looks real slow out there though. Like, dude, Antonio Gates is moving, and this guy is like walking around with a I don't know, like a cane. It's just a mess. <laughs> Gotta do what you gotta do. They'll bring it home. That'd be actually kind of funny if Bill Belichick ended up having a cane one day. He was just <laughs> on the sidelines. I don't know why I thought that would be funny, but I don't know. This this needs to end. Yeah, this, this is, is wild. Fantasy yeah, football. You see, end. <laughs> you see when uh, uh, Belichick reached into his like sock and pulled out the challenge flag? That was that was a wild move. No, I didn't see that. He keeps it in there. Yeah, it was it was it was a good so, luck. My favorite. <laughs> Belichick moment from this year was uh, when he ran out of the tunnel and the little kids were standing there waiting for a high five. <laughs> just, just fucking timed them. Hey, just fucking sprinted right by them like no fucks given. I think they were wearing the opposite team's jersey. I don't think that really mattered. He probably would yeah, have I don't think that mattered at all. A Pat's jersey as well. But all right, y'all, that is going to wrap it up for this week's Q and A. Um, I'm sorry if I missed any of your questions. As always, you can hit us up on Twitter at fbgod at nick underscore bdge. That stuff will be linked in the description as well as probably right below our picture for the entirety of this video um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new good luck in your championship this week give that video a thumbs up if you like anime and we will see y'all on the next i don't even know what i'm doing for the remainder of the week i don't think i'm gonna put up any more content entourage yeah, that's right. Honestly, I might just live stream me watching Entourage in bed. That's the, that's the remainder of the content you're getting from me. But no, I'm out. We out. Goodbye. Peace. See ya.